Good morning, Hungry for God Church. Welcome back to another Sunday experience. I am Vernell Samuel, Senior <laughs> Hungry for God Church, and I'm so excited to be able to bring the word of the Lord to you today. Before I begin, I would love for you to hit the share button. I want you to spread the message of Jesus Christ. We are in the middle of a phenomenal series called Revive the Five, and we are speaking about the fivefold office gifts of Jesus Christ. And uh, so far we talked about the apostle, about the prophet. We understood what those two different offices were, the roles they play. And the goal, the overall objective in this series is that you will begin to understand your calling. You'll begin to understand where you fit inside of what I like to call the five personality types of Christ. You see, because in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible said that when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he gave gifts unto men. And the gifts that he gave unto men, according to the scriptures, he said he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, pastors, and some to be teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. And so not one person is everything, right? Jesus five, but when he ascended, he gave gifts to people to be one of these things. And so one of the thing, one of the one of the ideas I want you to grasp about the fivefold is that an, a fivefold office gift is not just gifted; he or she is the gift. That. A prophet is not just gifted, but he or she is a gift. An apostle is gifted, he or she is a gift. Okay? A, a teacher is not just gifted, but they themselves are a gift. Because Christ has given this person to a, an organization, to a church, to a place, to be, to equip the rest of the church for the works of ministry. We also learned last week that the fivefold ministry is not a hierarchy system. It's not something where you start at the bottom and work your way up. But no, these fivefold gifts are to work in tandem to each other. We are to seek the full administration of all five working together. And for so long, I think one of the most popular offices or the most popular yeah, gifts that we've seen in the church was the pastor. But the truth of the matter is, the pastor is limited without the evangelist is limited without the teacher. Every office has a strength and every office has a weakness, all right? So I need you to understand when I'm going through these fivefold, I want you to see which one of these fivefold office gifts resonate with you. Where do you see uh, uh, your orientations, your heart? What jumps out at you and grabs your attention? Because you are going to either you're one of these five or you are designed to help serve under one of these five umbrellas to help bring glory to God. Amen. So to speak about the office gift of the evangelist the evangelist i believe we're living in the hour of the evangelist i believe that every single one of us needs of an evangelist why because we're living in an era where communication drives the world we're living in a time where it is through the mediums we have through social the internet, that it is possible for every single one of us to spread the message of Jesus Christ in, in a way that it was impossible before the internet. We are all saying for the last several months that we're all digital evangelists. You got a Facebook page, you have the possibility to evangelize. You have a, something called a share button. And what you're going to learn about evangelists is that evangelists share the message evangelists are master storytellers evangelists are, are, are those who help advance and spread a cause 
a storyline, a mission to and God's kingdom cannot advance without evangelists. All right. So if you're taking notes, the first thing I want you to do is to write this down. What is an evangelist? An evangelist is a good news. That is the biblical textbook definition of an evangelist, a bringer of good news. Somebody who brings good news, uh, uh, someone who proclaims or announces good tidings, good things. The purpose of preaching the gospel, according to Isaiah 61, the Bible says, uh, I, the spirit of the Lord, because he has anointed me to preach, to proclaim, to announce good news to the poor. And so the reason why preaching is important is because it helps to impact, persuade, it helps to convince someone to believe a message. Evangelists are specialists at preaching. They are specialists at spreading this message. In fact, if you were to it's modernize the term evangelist, an evangelist is to the church what a marketer is to the world. See, evangelism is simply marketing. Evangelists are God's PR team. They are the ones responsible for spreading a message. You know, I looked up the, the, the definition of uh, or what marketing is online, and a very simple definition I found is that uh, marketing is the process of getting people interested in your company's product or service. Marketing is simply the process of getting people interested in your company's product or service. I think one of the problems that the church has today is that we have a market. We have the greatest message in the world, the greatest story to be told, the story of God's love for, for, for planet Earth. Without great marketing, we won't tell that story right. See, when, we, when, when, the, when a, 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 many major companies invest hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions of dollars, marketing and great branding and great PR, because they understand I can have a great product, but if I don't advertise it right, if I don't promote it right, if it doesn't come across as good news to somebody else, then that product. Guys, we're selling a, a story. And now when I say sell, I'm not just talking about financially. Because the purpose of selling is to simply convince a person to believe something. And we are called to help win the world to Jesus. You know, the Bible says in, in the book of Proverbs that he that wins souls is wise. And so in order to, in order to convert somebody to the message of Jesus, we have to be wise about it. We have to be strategic and we have to be tactical. And our product, what is our product offering? What are we offering? The church offers relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's all we're offering. We're offering the world a chance at getting to know, have a relationship with God that would change their life, that would, that would change their, 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 that would give them hope. As a matter of fact, John 17, 3, Jesus said, this is eternal life, that you may know God in Jesus Christ, whom he sent. So we're offering eternal life to people. We're offering eternal life to a dying world. And now evangelists take that story and are able to communicate it in such a way that's it. <laughs> you know, the, the, the gift of an evangelist is salesmanship salesmanship. They know how to sell you something. They're, they're, they're very and passionate people, okay? They, 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 they know how to convince you. If, if you've ever seen a salesman show up to your house to try to sell you a product, it could be a product that doesn't work. It can be a product that you don't need. 
A great salesman will convince you that you need that product. A great salesman will come to you on a beach and get you to buy sand on a beach. <laughs> a great salesman has the ability to convince you of something that you didn't know you needed. Do you know Apple? Apple, uh, uh, the company that we all love, iPhones, MacBooks, Apple has actually established on their team people called evangelists. Did you know that? They actually have a brand evangelist. And uh, I believe his name was Guy Kawasaki. He coined that all over Silicon Valley. A lot of these companies are embracing the idea that we actually need a chief evangelist on our team. And this is why I, I'm bringing this subject to you in a modern way, because I want you to understand that you can be gifted and anointed and called to do something that you may say, um, I, I, I don't see myself necessarily doing it in church, but I can see myself doing it in the world. To know that God anointed you to bring his kingdom with you anywhere you go through one of these fivefold gifts. Now check this out. Guy Kawasaki, chief evangelist of Apple products, Apple computers. He actually um, has a book where he talks about the difference between being a salesman and being an evangelist. Guy Kawasaki, for example, said evangelism is it's a way of life. Now, I don't even know if this guy's a Christian yet, but he's, he's taking his, his grace gift, what Christ has appointed him to do, man, leading the way in spreading the message of, evangel of, 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 Apple, of Apple products. So he, he actually gave a breakdown, the difference between sales, traditional sales and evangelism. Check this. For example, he said, motivation under traditional sales is all about making money. But motivation under evangelism is all about making history. Making history. He said the philosophy under traditional sales is to sell you something. But he said that the, the philosophy of evangelism is to convert you. See, because notice how some of us have Apple. We went from Microsoft to Apple. We went from using Windows to now using Apple. I know I was converted. Yep, I became a believer in Apple thanks to the evangelists company. See, they converted you to become a, a, a hopefully, prob, prob, possibly a lifetime uh, uh, owner of their products. He also said, the traditional goal of, make, of, making, of making, I'm sorry, the traditional goal is to just meet quotas. But he said the goal under evangelism is to change the world. The goal on the traditional sales or the when of traditional sales is an 8 to 5 p.m. time clock. But he says under evangelism, it's any time. Any time. So is the need for evangelists. Evangelists. And I believe that we all ought to do the work of evangelists. Let me give you some Bible now so you don't think I'm just speaking corporate. The first or the only evangelist in the Bible, you know who it is? It's a man by the name of Philip. Philip. He's the only person that was actually given the title evangelist. You, that was found in Acts 21 verse 8. But evangelistic call was manifested in Acts chapter 8. Let's turn to Acts 8 really quickly. Acts chapter 8 verse 4. The Bible says that therefore those who were scattered and went the word, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed great joy in the city. 
in this city. And so here it is, we see the demonstration of an evangelist under the anointing of Christ, that Philip went to the city that was an unreached people group. They had never experienced um, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. They had never heard about the gospel of the kingdom. And here it is, as as a chief marketer, he knew his job was to convince these people about who Jesus is. And one of the things that the Bible promises us that God says that when you preach his message, that he's going to confirm his message with signs and wonders. He said, I will back, God says, I will back my word up. Uh, we find that in the, in the Great Commission in Mark chapter 16. These signs will follow those who will believe. They will cast out devils in my name. They will heal. So here it is, fiery preacher Philip, hears this word, goes into the city, and he, t and he turns this city upside down. The Bible literally says that there was great joy in that city because he manifested the kingdom and he represented. He was a, he was a brand ambassador of heaven at that moment for an entire city to come to know Jesus. And I believe that in this looking to raise up evangelists who will understand how to go into the world and know how to communicate this message of Christ to a world that is dying, that is hopeless, that is, that is filled with anxiety. I believe now is the perfect time for evangelists to get up on their platforms, to go out into the world, into the streets, wherever they can to communicate the love of God. Let's carry the heartbeat of the harvest. They have a heart for the unsaved. They have a heart for the lost. The difference between a, pre a pastor or a teacher in the church is that an evangelist will be sitting in a church service thinking about the people on the street. They're hearing a, a sermon like this, but they're thinking about how can they go outside and find and meet somebody to tell them about Jesus. See, evangelists are not content four walls of a church building because they understand there is a world that is dying that needs to know the Lord. They have an urgency and a fire inside of their belly to go out to be inviters, to be, to be recruiters, to get people into Jesus, to know Jesus. You see this? Evangelists love to see the lost saved. They love to see they love to see people born again. They love to preach in order to see lives changed. You know, I will, one of, one of our brothers in our church, Sherin, uh, he, and uh, actually watching him over the years taught me so much about the nature of an evangelist. And I will literally sit here watching him while he's in church, and I just see his gears going. Like he's looking out the window, looking to see when he can. Because being in the four walls is not really exciting to him. But when he goes into the street and he opens up his mouth, he shares God's heart. He has a love for people uh, uh, that's next to none. Because his connection point, communing with God, is him helping to reach new people, to bring them in to, to know Jesus. And so... One of the things I want you to understand, if I was to give you takeaways about how we can begin to connect the dots between the calling of an evangelist and their call to serve in the world as well as in the church. Here's some breakdown this is, and I want you to lean in with me. Evangelists, once again, are very highly passionate people. They have an ability to influence very excited and enthusiastic. They love people. They love people. One of the distinctions between the, the, the apostle and the prophet and an evangelist, and a, apostles and prophets lo, are usually more in tune with what God wants, while evangelists and the other office gifts are more in tune about what people want. See, the evangelists Many times an evangelist looks like an apostle, but evangelist has more of a desire to just bring people to Christ, but not necessarily to build them up in Christ. 
See, I will reach you where you are, find you on the street corner, bring you into the church, get you saved, and then drop you off to a pastor and a teacher and somebody else to teach you the ways of Christ while they go out and reach somebody else. I kind of look at hostage negotiators. They're sent out and people are in the grips of hell and, and, and people are, are bound to things in life. And, and, and evangelist goes into the dark. They want to go style places. They want to go where the battle is and they want to pull you out. They're like firefighters. When people are fighting for their lives, it's the evangelist that wants to go right into the depths of where a person is and bring them in and bring them in to, to the kingdom. Evangelists are willing to go where no one else is willing to go. They'll go to another part of the world. Evangelists love going on mission trips. They because they love going to new places to find people who don't know Jesus. So if you love to travel, you probably got an evangelist to call on your life. <laughs> the weaknesses, however, is that evangelists can sometimes be a little pushy. Just like that salesman who keeps coming and calling you over and over again. They can be a little pushy. dishonest at times but in the end evangelists are built differently because they have a strong resistance to rejection you can tell a salesman no over and over again but they understand at some point you might convert because I'm going to convince you one day of the product that I believe in this is why Jesus tells us do not go into the world without receiving power from on high because he doesn't an evangelist or a witness of him without power. We must understand that to be able to effectively communicate the message of Jesus, God wants to anoint us and give us the power to be able to our presentation of Jesus with the anointing, the anointing that will point people to Christ, that the works that you will do will point people to Jesus. They'll say, man, I see, the, I see what you're doing here. There's something powerful there's something special about you and the, the anointing is what's going to set us apart here are some examples of modern day evangelists or example you can function in the gift of evangelism or on or in the office of an evangelist so i already mentioned um, how in the corporate world evangelists or evangelism is so uh, an evangelist in the world might be a brand marketer, a brand ambassador, uh, a salesman or a saleswoman. An evangelist can be a traveling preacher or an apologist, someone who goes around and defends the faith. A marketer can be an advertising specialist. Or an evangelist is someone who, who might be a promoter. Some of the greatest evangelists I know were ex-club promoters. They used to promote parties and promote club events. But that's really an evangelistic office and an, an evangelistic anointing on your life. The ability to promote a product, a service, an event, and get people to come. That's what God wants you to do when you, as an evangelist and get people to know about him, to come to his kingdom, to come to his church, to come to Jesus. Evangelists are campaigners. Com campaigners, people who promote campaigns. This is an example of an evangelist. A DJ is an example of an evangelist. So you see how this grace can operate in so many different unique ways. I said to you today resonates with you you most likely are wired for evangelism and God wants to use that gift use that anointing on your life to bring people out of darkness into his marvelous light to tell the story of Jesus like I said the greatest story on earth to be able to share that story in a way that people's lives will be changed as I close I wrote this down and I wanted, this is what the Lord gave me as a prophetic word.
for evangelists to arise. The Lord said to me, many people today, son, are, looking for, are not looking for pastors, but evangelists. Evangelists, this is your year to extend the reach of heaven to a lost, hurting, and broken world. Your heart is massively burning right now as you see the state of the nation. You've had enough quarantine. You were allergic to the four walls of the church to begin with, and now your blood is boiling in the four walls of your homes. Evangelists, God is calling you to arise. You are the marketer. You are the mobilizer of the kingdom. Your infectious personality is designed to make the kingdom go viral. You are anointed to be Jesus' PR team that compels the lost to come and meet their Savior. And there's a new flame coming on you to publish, to promote, to connect, to recruit, to invite and influence souls in the way that Evangelists, the streets are your pulpit. Facebook is your pulpit. YouTube is your pulpit. TikTok is your pulpit. Twitter is your pulpit. The darkness of our the brightness of your calling. Evangelist, it's time to arise. So if what I said to you resonated with you, let's pray that God will shift your life and a higher focus, a greater focus, so that you'll understand that what he's put inside of you is much greater than a paycheck. It's to bring glory to God and to establish his kingdom here on earth. So Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this revelation of evangelists. I pray, Lord God, that you will call all of the evangelists that are in hiding, those who wrap themselves up in their nine to five, and this, that now they're going to see, God, that there was, this was more than just a job, but this is an assignment. And I pray, Father, that you will breathe into them fresh ideas, fresh creativity to be able to take the message of Spread it. Even now, Father, I pray that there are some of us who are storytellers and they are seeing ideas for even movies and playwrights to, to create a story that will cause people's hearts to change as they see the Father's love. And I thank you, God, for raising up fresh evangelists that will change this world. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you now. Amen. Amen. All right. Share this message like I said. If you know anybody that, that, that aligns with anything we just said, let them hear that. And next week, we're going to continue this series as we talk about the office of the pastor. God. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video. Share this video with a friend and don't forget you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.